Hey y'all, it is Elizabeth Off Grid. I have been living in a car for almost a year and a half now, and I want to answer some common questions that I get about money stuff. So people ask me a lot, you know, how do you make money? How are you supporting yourself living in a car? How much money do you spend on things? How do you make money on YouTube? You know, all those kind of questions. And so I'm kind of putting that all together in one video about all the money stuff. Of course, right now they're gonna do, start doing things that are really loud. Okay, I rolled out the windows. <laughs> Let's first talk about how much money it costs to live in a vehicle. Now, obviously this it wildly varies depending upon the person. There are some people who live in a vehicle for super, 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 super cheap and some people who are spending a lot more money than I am living in a vehicle. It depends on the kind of vehicle you live in. It depends on how much you're traveling and it also just depends on your general lifestyle. So for me, one of the big things that I have done recently that has made a huge difference is I've actually split my budget and how I handle my finances into two different sections. And that's really important, especially looking at my income and where my income goes. So the two sections of the budget, one section is my living expenses. And my living expenses are paid for by YouTube in different ways. And I'm going to break that down a little bit. So what do I mean by living expenses? Okay. So I made all my bills such as for health insurance, um, my, you know, eyeglasses insurance, VSP, property insurance, life insurance, planet fitness, Apple care, uh, Apple iCloud, um, no robo, which blocks spam calls on my phone. Kind um, Kindle unlimited. Sometimes I have, sometimes I don't. Um, I have some things I donate money to um, and serious radio. So all those things together are paid for by YouTube income. Then I also have just the things that change every month. And so that is, you know, groceries, buying water, ice, which right now I'm not really buying, but I do when I travel, gas, gas in town, gas while I'm traveling. So right now I'm in the San Francisco Bay area. I'm not traveling right now because my car is injured. So I can't really go anywhere until it gets fixed. It's not, they're not starting fixing it until next week. So I've just been here, you know, obviously a lot less in gas than when I'm traveling around a lot, right? Gifts, prescriptions, laundry, dining out, then just kind of discretionary. I put a whole bunch of things in discretionary, which are things like entertainment things, um, buying stuff for crafts and hobbies, buying new clothes, all that kind of stuff I lump in together as discretionary because some months I spend zero dollars on that and then some months I spend a lot more. And then I save money every month. I put money into a savings, just a regular savings account and I also put money into a Roth IRA. So all that stuff is paid for by YouTube and I'll talk a little bit more about what that, what I actually mean by that. Then I also have a law firm that I own and I'm the only person there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm an employee in the sense of I'm an employee of the law firm, but that's just for tax purposes. I'm the owner also. And that money goes to paying off debt and paying for the rental property and that I'm doing renovations on. So I don't live in there. Well, I, I camp in it when I'm working on renovating it, but I don't live there. I've never lived there. I'm I'm trying to fix it up so I can sell it and then I will use it to pay off all my debt and then I will be able to shut down my law firm. <laughs> that's, that's the idea. But, but besides that, I've been using the money from my law firm to pay off debts in a very aggressive way. Thousands and thousands of dollars a month are going to paying off debts. I'm not living off of that money, which means once all my debts are paid off, yeah, I can shut down my law firm. So, and Thinking about that, I think this is a really important perspective for anybody who wants to live off of YouTube, start a business and live off of it, whatever, is if you're trying to figure out, can I quit my job? And really my law firm is my job, even though I'm also the boss and the owner, it still is the thing that I want to replace <laughs> with all my YouTube things and also other thing businesses that I plan to start in the future, which I'll mention in a little bit. So I wanted to figure out, can I just live off of YouTube. And how you do that is actually by splitting up your budget, not putting everything in one place, splitting up your budget and being like, how much of my living expenses can right now be covered by this new business and start adding more things into that category. Is your new business able to pay your rent or your mortgage? Is your new business able to pay for your food? Is your new business able to pay for your gas? Whatever. Have it start on some chunk. And then as it makes more money, it add, you can add more and more and more and more things to that chunk until it's covering all your living expenses. And then you can quit your job. 
and you don't have this like time frame where you're not making any money yet and it's very stressful and you're running up credit card debt and you're adding all this stress. I mean, I think this is a very low stress way to be able to quit your job or shut down the thing that you don't want to do and pivot is by incrementally letting that new thing take over expenses in your life so you can quit the old thing and you already know that you can do it. Now, but that takes a while and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So anyway, so how do I actually make money? When I say law firm or YouTube, what is that? How does that actually work? So as I said, I have a law firm. I'm an employee from a technical tax perspective because it's an S corp, but there's no, I'm the boss also. So it's no person that I'm working for. In that law firm, I have clients. Now I've done many different things for clients over the years, but at this point today in December of 2024, the only things I'm doing for clients is filing trademark applications and then handling all the stuff with the trademark applications. And I am, I have a Patreon where part, one of the levels of the Patreon is email advice. And the email advice is about small business law. So I don't think I said that earlier in this video. I've been an attorney helping small businesses with legal stuff. Over the years, I've done many different things, setting up LLCs and corporations, contracts, all those kind of things. I don't do any of that part anymore. I narrowed my business and kind of focused it to be more efficient and also easier to run as I'm traveling. And that's why I just do trademark work at this point. So trademark work and email advice, no phone calls, no consultations, none of the other things that I used to do. It is very narrow the kind of law that I practice. And how my clients pay me is either by the patron they're paying on a monthly thing or for the trademarks they're paying a flat fee. So it's very, very simple from a billing perspective. I occasionally will do hourly work for clients who have been clients for me for years and they're coming in with a trademark they've already had and they need a little thing done to it. But I don't do that for new, new people. You know, it's just people who have been a client of mine for many, many years. So that's how my law firm makes money. Now, whenever I get to a point where I want to shut down my law firm, I can't actually just completely shut down my law firm because I have already accepted money to do work that is going to take years to do because trademark work, like if I file a trademark for you today, it's going to be a year before we hear anything from the trademark office. And then they're going to come back with a thing and then I'll have to do something else. And then I'll have to do something else. So it could be a year, two years, three years before that work is done that you paid for me, paid me to do today. So it takes a long time. So that means that if I shut down my law firm to new clients, I probably still have two or three years of work that I will need to do at least, which kind of sucks just from the perspective of malpractice insurance and some other overhead things that I will keep having to pay for years in the future, even though I'm not bringing in more money. And But that's a problem I will deal with later. For YouTube, how do I make money there? So here's a big thing is I have two YouTube channels. I have this channel, Elizabeth Off Grid, which is my, you know, vlogging, travel, living in a car kind of channel. Then I have a channel, which is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. The handle is Elizabeth PW. And that channel is about small business law. So I have tutorials and how to's and comparisons and reviews and stuff like that for small businesses about various different small business law topics. That channel is the one that makes the most money not just because it has more subscribers. Actually, that channel, the number of subscribers is not relevant. This channel it is, but that channel isn't. And the reason is, is that channel is, as I said, tutorials, answering questions. It is a channel where someone comes in and they watch one video because they have a question. How do I file a trademark application? Or what's the difference between an LLC and an S Corp? Whatever. And they Google that or maybe search it in YouTube and then they see my video and they watch it and they get the answer. And they don't necessarily subscribe or want to watch all my videos because they don't need all that stuff. They have one thing and they come in and get that. It's a very different channel than this one where this channel is more about having a relationship, following along with the story, you know? So it is completely different vibe, completely different channel. But that channel makes a lot more money on advertising, partly because it does still get a bit more views, not a lot more views, but it's because the ads pay more money. So on this channel, the ads could be for anything you know, that you're watching. It's like just stuff that they're marketing people generally. It could be for soap, whatever. Those ads pay a very small amount of money per each 1,000 views is how they put it together. Not 1,000 views of your video, but 1,000 views of the advertising. My other channel, the ads are like companies that you can hire to help your company with something. Okay, these are high price point things. So these ads pay literally 10 times as much, not sometimes 20 times as much. Huge amounts of money. This is kind of wacky how this these take 
like these are paying like 10 or 20 times as much. And so because of that, that channel can make a lot more money on advertising for the exact same number of views. There's months where they actually make the exact, they, there's months where my two channels have the same number of views, but my legal channel will make literally 10 or 20 times as much money, the same number of views. Now, advertising revenue varies wildly. It varies wildly based upon just obviously how many views you're getting of the ads, but it's also vi varies wildly based upon the companies that are putting ads on there. So for example, a vlogging channel or a channel that, that reviews products that people buy, a lot of times November, December are the big advertising months for those channels because of people buying products for the holidays. That is different than my legal channel. My legal channel is down right now. And why is that? Because this is not the time you start a new company. You start a new company in January because you create a New Year's resolution to start a new company. That's when I make money on ads. January, February, March, April. Those are my big ad revenue months. Huge ad revenue months. I will literally make three or four times as much money on ads, all things being equal. Because more companies are advertising and they bid on the ads, which drives up the price. So it goes up and down wildly. The second way I make money on YouTube is through advertising and sponsors. And I put quote amount sponsors because I don't, I have not yet really done traditional sponsorship stuff. I think when people think about sponsors, they're thinking that a sponsor is paying you so many hundreds or thousands of dollars to make a video about their thing. And that exists, right? I'm not talking about that. This is, I got a lot of like. I don't usually do that. Instead, what I do is affiliate relationships. And this is where I talk about whatever it is I talk about. Maybe they send me a free product to review or they give me access to a service to review or I just like the thing and I am talking about it. And then I'm an affiliate. So if someone buys through my link, maybe using a code or they just click on this particular link that has a code embedded in it, then I get a certain percentage of it, which helps support the channel. That could be half. There, and this is not, not on this channel, my other channel. Um, I have things that I talk about on there that I get 50% of the revenue, which is a lot. And because these are higher in things, they're business to business things versus other things that I talk about where I get 4% and the price point is like $10. 4% of $10 is not very much money, <laughs> okay? So it, this varies wildly depending upon the kind of products you're talking about, depending also upon are you just sending people to Amazon where their percentages are low, or are you sending them to the actual website for the company where the percentages are much higher? So it varies wildly. However, it's a win-win because if I talk about something and somebody goes and buys it, then I get a little bit of money, the company gets money, they get a new customer or client. It's a win-win for everybody. But if someone pays me outright to do a video and then they don't get anybody from it, then it's like this weird awkwardness, you know what I mean? And so I th I'm much more comfortable doing affiliate things. And I can actually make more money in the end because if I talk about something and everybody loves it and they buy it, then obviously that helps everyone. The other way is through Patreon. So I talked about before in my law firm, I have a level of Patreon that they get email advice. I count that un under my legal business. But then for this, I have a Patreon where people just pay me to support the channel, right? I actually want to... Let's see if I can cover this up and make this be a little bit less. That's a little bit better, huh? A little bit better for some. Okay. So for the Patreon, people are really supporting the channel. And that is the main thing someone is doing um, on, for my Elizabeth Off Grid. Now, I actually have a love on the Patreon that's free. So you can just join to, you know, get access to certain things. But then the people who pay $5 a month get more access to more things. I'm also going to have other things. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. So in the future that I will still also count this under YouTube in some ways, but I will also track it separately. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. I'm also gonna be selling, this like really makes my shirt go down. I'm also gonna be selling products myself. Like I'm planning to have a level of my Patreon that will be like you get stuff in the mail every month or every quarter or something. I don't know, we're gonna have to see how it goes. And um, I'm also gonna have a Shopify store where I will sell products. I'm going to try different things. I'm going to have stuff that I procure that I'm kind of, I'm going to go out and get stuff while I travel. And these will be things that I find while traveling that I'm sharing with you all. And then I'm also going to have stuff that I make or have made 
that are specifically for living in a vehicle or road tripping or something. I don't know. This is all still ideas. I was planning that this would be launched right now. It is not getting launched right now. And the reason is, is because I've been working on the rental house and turning that over so I can sell it. So that's taken like all my extra time and energy and I can't make products right now, but that's kind of the long-term idea. So saying all that, sometimes I get a question where people are talking about, you know, this is my dream to live in a vehicle, whether it's a van, car, RV, whatever. And they want to, you know, do YouTube and, and travel full time. And, you know, that's something they really want to do. Should they do this? Now, I'm going to put aside the whole should you live in a car or vehicle or travel full time. I'm going to talk about specifically YouTube or any other content creation. It doesn't matter if it is TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Content creation generally. Is that, you know, does that make sense to support yourself using YouTube? So here's the thing. Anytime you start a business, you have to plan that it will take three years before you can live off of it. You might get lucky. You might get something go go viral. You might the the algorithm may love you. Some amazing thing may happen and be like one of these people that you hear about where they everything takes off in just a couple months. They're living off of it. But luck is not a business plan. Okay. So when I say three years to live off of it, that that is realistic. That is something that I'm not going to say you can plan on it in the sense of it's guaranteed, obviously, but it is very realistic. If you are working diligently on any business that you start, three-year mark, if you're not making a profit by then where you can live off of it, something this you may, you may need to pivot to something else. It's very possible to do. Obviously, it depends on how much you're working in the business. Is it the right business for you? Do you love it? Are there kinds of customers that are actually in there? Is this a good way to make money? It depends on what your lifestyle is, et cetera. But just as a general rule of thumb, three years. So when I say that, what I mean is, is if you want to quit your job and live in your car, if you like, you need to have some other way to make money to get those through those three years until you can get the whole content creation thing going. And that's what the law firm is for me, is that my law firm is pay, you know, paying off all my bills and all that kind of stuff so I can get to the three-year mark. And the thing is, the three-year mark isn't when I moved into a car. The three-year mark started years before that. I started in 2020 going full on with YouTube for my law channel. And that first year, I hardly got any views, okay? Very minimal. And then after about a year, things started really taking off. All my new clients started coming in through my YouTube channel. And so I was using that both to make a little bit of money on YouTube, not very much at the beginning, and then also get clients from my law firm. But then over those three years, it became something that could support my living expenses. And now I am using the legal YouTube channel and then my law firm is really just going to pay off debt. So I'm using my legal YouTube channel to bootstrap this channel and my product business and all the new ideas that I have. And the same kind of thing, giving that having it'll having that three year time frame. It's very realistic. So during those three years, having something else that you do. It could be temp work, it can be, you know, all I've actually done videos about all the different ways to make money while living in a vehicle. It can be a regular job that you go to, it can be remote working and virtual working, it can be, you know, working at a campsite many different things you can do. But the idea is, is that, you know, minimizing your living expenses, obviously by living in a vehicle, which can make a huge difference. And then, but then planning that it is going to take three years for you to actually make money on this. Now, what should this channel be? And this is something that I think is a big mistake. A lot of people make you can, I can, as I've told you, I make the most money from my law channel, not from this channel. This channel, I think will make good money. It's making hundreds of dollars a month but it's not making thousands of dollars a month. And I've been doing this for over a year and a half. So should someone make a YouTube channel about living in their vehicle? So here's the thing, YouTube or any content creation can either be educational or entertainment or a combination of both. I think a lot of times the sweet spot is a combination of both. And this channel, a lot of ways is a combination of both. If you're educational, like my law channel, it is actually easier to get it off the ground because Your videos, if they're done correctly, are going to be answering a question that people type into Google. They type into Google, how do I file a trademark application? Or they type into Google, how do I knit a sweater? Whatever, there's some question that people have 
and they ask Google about it and your video is the answer. So much easier than trying to convince the YouTube algorithm to like your stuff because you're just providing content that answers a search result. I'm not saying it's guaranteed that's gonna take off, but it's so much easier to get views on those videos. On the other side, if you're doing entertainment, whether it's stuff that's funny, whether it's vlogging of your daily life, there needs to be something about it that is unique or interesting. In the perfect world, you're actually gonna have some of both, where it's both answering questions that people Google as well as something that is inherently interesting. So what do I mean by that? So here's the thing. The early YouTubers could just vlog stuff and the fact that they were a YouTuber vlogging was the thing that was interesting. Some of them were also just incredibly physically attractive people. That sometimes also happens still even now where some people were just, whoo, beautiful, beautiful people. Yeah, you know what? The fact that you're gorgeous is gonna get a whole bunch of people to watch you. But for all of us normal looking people, that is also not a business plan (laughs) that's gonna work. Look at what about you is going to be interesting, unique, remarkable to somebody else. And that's really hard to figure out because it's you. So to you, it is not interesting or unique or remarkable because it's your normal life. So this can be a real hard thing to kind of figure out. And in some ways, how you figure that out is just by making a whole lot of videos. I don't, I think I saw the rule of thumb is making like was it like 50 videos or something like there's a lot of figuring out what your message is on YouTube or what your niche is on YouTube or whatever is by making a bunch of videos and seeing what happens there's a lot of work to do and I th- I'm thinking it was, was it 25 videos 50 videos I don't know a lot before you can kind of figure out what the your shtick is it could be a lot of different things so it's Just living in a van is not gonna be enough right now because there's so many people living in a van. But let's say you live in a van with five dogs or you live in a van with 12 children or you live in a van and you're deaf or have some other physical thing that's different about you. Maybe you live, like for me, I started out living in a Honda Civic. That was inherently different than most of the van life people. And now I live in a Subaru. That is inherently different than most of the van life people. It could be the way you travel, the kinds of travel that you're doing. It could be something about your personality. I mean, some people are just incredibly charismatic. And so that in and of itself, that charisma is just gonna pull people in. Um, Some people it's because they're super attractive and the super attractiveness brings them in. It could be that, yeah, you, you're living in a van like all these other people, but you've been living in a van for 30 years. Or it could be that, that you're living in a van while having this other thing, business that you're doing. So you live in a van with a, you have a knitting machine in there and you knit stuff, you knit sweaters that you sell on Etsy. And this is all about the, that adventure. So I think you really need to kind of capitalize on the things that are different about you versus everybody else. But my general recommendation is to not do a vlogging channel or do it on the side like I actually am. And then having your main channel, the one that you're trying to make money with, be the thing that is your teaching educational channel. Look at your life for your career, your hobbies, your interests, volunteer work. What's the thing that people always ask you advice about? What's the thing that your friends want you to do for them? Your family members are asking you to do for them? That, that thing, be the thing that you make this YouTube channel about. Now that can be a struggle because maybe it's not enough for, you know, making one video a week for the rest of your life. And that can be an issue, but that can be also a great way to get started. And if you're just thinking this is going to be your thing that you're going to do for now to bootstrap your vlogging channel about travel vlogging, that can make a lot of sense. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the details of should these be two separate channels? The answer is yes, but why that should exist and and all those things, that's kind of beyond the scope of this. I highly recommend looking at some educational training, how-to aspect of your life and not just travel vlogging. Obviously, if you wanna travel vlog or whatever, then go ahead and do that. Like, I'm not telling you not to. I'm more saying looking at it from a business perspective, from a making money perspective. What? probably makes the most sense. Okay, that is me talking about money stuff and business stuff and YouTube making money stuff for a while. If you all have any questions about money things, budgeting, income, making money on YouTube, any of that stuff, feel free to ask them in the questions below and I'll either point you in the right direction or I'll use that as an idea for a future video. 
Otherwise, feel free to stop by in the comments and just say hi. I'll talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.